Um, I feel like I just don't know enough about it, really. Do you believe in a creator? Yes. I believe there is a god, but I'm, I don't know enough about Islam yet. Okay. Would you say the creator is not a man or a woman? Something I unique. I don't think it's a human. Like, like, exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. This is, this is our belief as Muslims, right? We use the term Allah. Why do we use the term Allah? Because the Arabic word Allah is not masculine or feminine. Yeah. It's uniquely, uniquely for the creator, right? Yeah. So we believe Allah is uniquely one as well. It's not two or three or four. Do you agree with me in order for you to be the creator, you have to be absolute. God, in order for you to be God, you have to be absolute, right? Yeah. In order for you to be absolute, you have to be one. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we believe Allah is uniquely one. Mm -hmm. We believe Allah is independent. Meaning that Allah doesn't depend on anyone. Everything depends on Allah. Right? So everything in the universe depends on something else. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay, so if everything in the universe depends on something else, there has to be something that is independent that everything depends upon. Yes. Right? You see, that's Allah. Yes. That's the creator that everyone depends upon. Okay? Yes. Allah doesn't be beget, nor he's born. Doesn't have a father, parent, doesn't have children, doesn't have a grandfather. Right? Like some religions believe in that, right? Yes. But we, we say that's, that doesn't make any sense. And there is nothing like unto him. Yeah. Which means that anything that I can conceive in my mind is not Allah. Yeah. Allah is much greater than that. It's like saying, look at the sun for 10 minutes straight. Can you do it? <laughs> no. Imagine the one who created the universe. Imagine the one who created the sun, the, the moon, the stars, right? And Allah says in the Quran, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. So if you're the light of the heavens and the earth, I can't even look at the sun. Yeah, imagine looking at the light of the heavens and the earth, right? So that is the, the creator that we believe in. Does that make sense to the same concept of God that you believe in? Um, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Like, I do kind of follow that. Yeah. Okay, good. So you believe you believe in Allah then? Okay. I, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> yes, because because that's Allah's description. Like for example, if you look at the Hindu religion, if you look at, uh, for example, uh, there's different gods. I don't know which one you want to pick, right? Yeah. There's a god with an elephant head, for example. Depends which one. These are not the gods you believe in. No. Right? So you don't believe in the Hindu gods. You don't believe in the Christian god, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You don't believe in that as well, right? You don't believe in, in the Jewish god necessarily as well. Because it's the same as the Christian god, isn't it? No, the Jewish god has, has a bit of uh, descriptions that I would say are deficiencies. I'll give you an example. Okay. Like for example, God in the Old Testament, according to the Jewish tradition, was wrestling with Jacob and Jacob is defeating him. He was beating God and God said to him, let me go. And then he let him go and he said, now you defeated God, you wrestle with God, you will be called Jacob. Okay? okay. So, and then God in the Bible needs to be reminded by a rainbow, for example, in the Old Testament. So he he regrets created human beings. Do you know what regret is? When you do an action that you do not know the outcome of, you regret it, right? That's what regret is. But God's all-knowing. How can God regret something when he's all-knowing? You get the point? Yeah. So I'm sure you don't believe in that type of God that regrets, remembers by a rainbow, defeated by people, right? Yeah. So when I say you believe in Allah, you do believe in Allah because all of these other attributes you don't believe in, yeah. right? So you believe in Allah. Now about messengers and prophets of God. Do you believe in messengers and prophets? Listen, now we move into the next step now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess if I read more about it, then okay. I would because I would be... My, my question is like, why would God speak to humans? Excellent. Exactly. Now, let me answer you. Allah says in the Quran that if we were to send them down an angel, yeah. right? They would not uh, relate to the angel, which would mean they would say, for example, Allah says, pray. Yeah. And the angel shows them how to pray. Mm. They will say, that's a perfect being. I cannot imitate it. I cannot pray. Prayer is hard for me. You, you send down a, a perfect being, right? Yeah. If you were to send down a normal human being, I maybe I'll be able to follow it, right? Yeah. But if God sends a human being and the human being demonstrates the best perfect manners that human being can do, then you and me, we can learn from that as an example. Mm -hmm. And no one can come with the excuse and say, I can't do it. A human being was before you, he did it. And he's a human, right? Yeah. So those are messengers. They are the people who will demonstrate for us how to behave, how to relate, how to connect with the creator. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that's why we believe in messengers of God, right? That and we say, sense. okay, we say Prophet Muhammad was there 1,400 years ago. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad was there 1,400 years ago. Now the question is, there are different possibilities in which we can come to because he made a claim, he said, I'm a messenger of God. Mm -hmm. So what are these possibilities? It's either Prophet Muhammad is saying the truth, mm -hmm. right? It's either Prophet Muhammad is not saying the truth. Mm -hmm. It's either, let's say, for example, he could be delusion. Mm -hmm. Let's say Prophet Muhammad, uh, he could be, what, what other options? Getting it from other source from Satan or something like that right yeah. or getting it from another person these are the only possibilities do you have any other possibilities um, I don't know think about it I'll tell you why because if we eliminate other possibilities then the only option that we have is what he has to be a messenger of God because yeah. we already know that God exists yeah. and if God exists then there has to be guidance that comes from it because everything in the universe is guided yeah. plants even the plants even the ants are guided yeah. right so we're not the old one out so we also need guidance from the creator right so 
Prophet Muhammad, why he could not have been والسلام, why he could not have been a liar? Sorry, I don't know. I called I called the guy by mistake. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So why Prophet Muhammad could not have been a liar? Yeah. Because I completely lost my thing. So that's <laughs> right. Coming back, coming back to to what we say. Okay, Prophet Muhammad left amongst his people for 40 years. They had two titles for him in Arabic. It was called the Sadiq Al Amin. You know what they mean? They mean the trustworthy, the honest. He was called that by his people. This is prior to him delivering the message and saying, "I'm a messenger of God." So when he was saying that, he was not yet receiving revelation from God. People lived with him for 40 years. And you know, in the past, people actually knew their neighbors. They knew the people around them because there was no social media sitting on your computer the whole day, right? You actually, you trade with people, go, they will know. If someone is a liar, he's already known in the community to be a liar. If someone is not good, does, does anything bad, it's already known. It's already spread what, yeah. through the, the community, right? Especially in small communities in, in Arabia, deserts of Arabia, right? Mm -hmm. So what we say is this, Prophet Muhammad, he was called the trustworthy and honest by his people. So his own people give a testimony that he's a trustworthy an honest person. Yes. That's the first thing. Second thing is when the Prophet Muhammad got revelation, he went on top of a mountain mm -hmm. and he said to his people, if I said to you, there's an army behind this mountain, do you believe me? They said, we've never known you to lie. Then he said to them, I'm, I'm the messenger of God. They, they rejected him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he said, stop worshiping the idols, stop worshiping the religion of your forefathers, right? These rocks that you make with your own hand. Yeah. They didn't like that. So they rejected him, right? Then Prophet Muhammad had uh, the chances to get anything that he wanted if he, would, if he was a liar. If he lies, he would lie for money, women, social status, right? That's what you would lie for. What else would you lie for? He was offered by the richest people in Mecca. First, he had lineage already. He was from a very pure lineage, lineage of Quraysh. They were the custodians of the Kaaba. He already had that. He already had honor. He was married to one of the richest women in, uh, in Mecca at the time. And he was doing trades for her, right? So he had the money, he had everything, right? But still, when he started preaching his message, they came, they offered him. They said to him, what do you want? You want to be a leader or make you a leader of us? You want money, we'll give you money. You want women, we'll give you all women. We'll give you any woman you like, right? Just stop preaching this message that you're doing. Yeah. He said to them, do you see the sun? They said, yes. He said, bring me a piece of it and I'll stop. <laughs> you know? Which means I will never stop doing this, right? Because yeah. I'm doing this for the sake of the creator. <laughs> and some people say to you, Prophet Muhammad could have got this from another source, right? Let's say the other source is a supernatural power. Uh, let's say he saw Satan, he saw something, right? Yeah. Would Satan command you to worship God alone? Oh. Would Satan tell you, tell you, go to the people and tell them no worship idols? Yeah. Would Satan say to you, give charity, be good to their neighbor? Curse Satan because that's what, that's what the Quran yeah. says. Would it make any sense, right? And would it make sense to say he took it from other people because he was not uh, he was not literate. He couldn't read or write, so he could not go copy information from the Greeks, from the Latins, from the Hindus. And he was not a traveler. Some who goes to travel all the time and come back from different cultures, right? Yeah. So he could not have copied it from someone else. Yeah. Could not have been lying, and absolutely he could not have been delusional. Why? Can you be? I'll give you an example. Prophet Muhammad's son died, and and a solar eclipse happened. Yeah. The people said the solar eclipse happened because his son died. Because he's a messenger of God. They said, look, it's a miracle. His son died, the solar eclipse happened. Yeah. If you're delusional, the first thing you're going to say is what? Of course, this happened because of me. I'm, I'm the messenger yeah. of God, right? Prophet Muhammad said, this is a sign of God. It does not happen for the death of life of anyone. If you see it, praise the Creator. That shows that someone is not delusional. Because if you're delusional, whatever sign out there, you make up signs to convince yourself of your delusion, right? Yeah. Also, Prophet Muhammad led armies, battles, right? Fought with different people, married women, lived with his community. Can you be delusional and fight a war and be a, a, a military leader and protect your, your people? Would that make any sense? No. Right. So if he could not be any of these things, then what, what is the only option that he could be? That's fine. He's a messenger of God, right? So that's what I'm saying to you. Look, these things are innate. Yeah. God has given us what we call the fitrah. Fitrah is the innate disposition that every human being has, right? When you hear this information, you know, it makes sense. It's very simple. It's common sense to the people they can already accept, right? Yeah. So do you know how a person becomes a Muslim? Um, they say like the passage Yes, they say something called the shahada, right? Yeah. Shahada is a testimony of faith. What is a testimony of faith? It's to testify there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. Yeah. And to testify that Prophet Muhammad is his messenger and servant. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense? Yeah. So exactly what we were talking about yeah. <laughs> this whole discussion, yeah. right? You already believe in Allah and you already agree Prophet Muhammad is his messenger and servant, right? Yeah. So if you testify to that, which makes sense to you, which you believe in, then this is how you enter Islam. Then you take your step by step to learn. Yeah. You, you like Life doesn't change 180 degrees. No one becomes a Muslim next day. She's her or him is doing everything. It doesn't work like that, right? Yeah. You don't change your life in one day, right? People accept and then they gradually learn. Prophet Muhammad used to send his companions to teach people about Islam and bring them to Islam.
Islam. First thing they told them about is the oneness of God, right? The next thing they told them about is after they accept the oneness of God, then the Prophet Muhammad said, then teach them how to pray, step by step. Once they learn that, they're okay, okay, next step is teach them how to give charity, right? So it's a step by step process, baby steps like they say, right? Yeah. And then you reach your goal, but you don't jump from one, one place to another, that doesn't work, right? Yeah. So you just get confused, overwhelmed with information, yeah. right? So when you become Muslim, don't ignore other people, what they say, do this, don't do that, focus on yourself, reading the Quran, focus on learning how to pray, that's what you should do, right? So a person becomes a Muslim, and then we believe as Muslims, that's the key to enter paradise. Imagine I have a key with me, and you will open the door of paradise today. <laughs> that is the key, that's the only key that can take us into paradise. Yeah. Okay? So, uh, my, question, my question to you is this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question to you is this, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want the key to enter paradise? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so if you say after me, this uh, is... Are you making me Muslim now? No, you become a Muslim. I'm not making you the God created me Muslim. I'm not making you Muslim. Look, Allah is the one who guides. So wait, if, it makes if sense, I say it now, it doesn't mean I'm a Muslim now. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I'll tell you something interesting. Look, in Islam, there's no baptism. There's no uh, a, a jug of water that I'm going to put on you that, that, that is going to convert you. It's very simple. Yeah. Someone believes in Allah, and Allah brings them into the truth, right? Yeah. By just saying the what they believe in, right? Yeah. Trust me, Islam is simple. Prophet Muhammad said to us, in the Yusrveli, the religion is easy. Yeah. Islam is easy, it's not a hard thing. It's an easy thing to do, right? It's just to testify what you believe in your heart. And you see the change in your life. When you start practicing Islam, introducing it into your life, then you will see the change that it will make in your life, right? But it makes sense to you. Like, what color is this? So, you believe something. Is there any problem in saying what you believe? No. You believe in Allah, you believe in Prophet Muhammad. That's a problem in testifying what you believe. <laughs> you yeah. get, you get what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. So, if you say, it's very simple. If you say after me, it'll be very, very simple, very easy for you. Don't worry, don't worry. It's, don't be nervous, right? I can't, like, I don't know, eat non halal food. Do you want to eat non halal? I want you to think about that. I have food in my fridge. <laughs> Do you know, do you know, don't worry about the food in your fridge. Let me, that's why I said to you step by step. Don't worry about these things. But let me ask you this. Do you know the difference between halal and non-halal meat? Um, there's halal and halal. But... Yeah, but do you know the benefits of halal meat? Do you know? It's because you like um, slaughter animals in a humane way or something. Exactly. So, so obviously halal, the, the way you treat the animals and the way you slaughter the animals, etc. Yeah. But I want to tell you this. Look, when the animal, even Prophet Muhammad told us something that, that is very merciful of the animal. He said to us, when you slaughter the animal, you have to keep the animal away from the other animal that doesn't even see the animal, so it's not frightened. You know what happens when the animals are frightened? Yeah. They release certain uh, germs in their blood, etc. Because they're frightened, they're shocked, right? So these things today, medically, we know the effects on it on animals. So what happens today? They electrocute the animal. Animal is not slaughtered, right? The animal is electrocuted. In Islam, the animal is slaughtered. So first, it feels the lowest level of pain yeah. when it's dying. Why? Because you cut the blood going to the brain, so you no, no longer feel pain. Right? Yeah. So it's just a few seconds for the animal to feel pain. Well, electrocution can take up to 30 minutes, according to some studies. Yeah. So it's horrible for the animal, right? Number one. Number two, when the animal is electrocuted, it's not slaughtered, the blood remains in the body. So any diseases that are released in the body, in the, in the blood remains in the blood in the meat that you eat. Yeah. But when we slaughter the meat and we let all the blood go, anything in the blood will come out with the, from the blood. So the meat you eat will be healthy and beneficial for you. That is true. So why would you want to eat something that is not good for you? <laughs> you understand, right? Okay. So anything that will change in your life, yeah. it will change for your benefit. Okay. Right? And as I said to you, it's a step-by-step -step thing. Don't worry about oh, what is in the fridge. <laughs> Don't worry about that, right? Yeah. Well, a step-by-step. -step. I'll connect you with the sisters here. Okay. The sisters, sisters here, they, they are in, in the community. Okay. They'll teach you anything you need to know. They'll take you to the mosque, right? And anything you need, they will do for you, right? Okay. So a step-by-step. -step. You just first accept Islam. Yeah. You read the Quran. Then you learn how to pray. No pressure. No one will pressure you. This is your choice. You're making it because you like it, because you agree with it, right? Yeah. Okay. So say after me. Say, I testify. I testify. There's nothing worthy of Worship. There is nothing worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I testify. And I testify. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. And servant. And servant. You see, it's very easy, right? It's very easy, sister, right? Oh, MashaAllah. Allah is where is the sister? <laughs> okay. Now no, no. say the same thing after after me, but in Arabic. The same thing you said. Say Ashhadu. Ashhadu. And, and La La Ilaha Illa Allah. Wa Ashhadu. Anna Muhammad Rasul Allah. That's it, sister. <laughs> come, I need to take you to the sisters. They need to hug you. Come, come, come with me. Come with me.